If you were asked to name one of the preeminent authors of our time, chances are the name John Irving would come up time and time again. Like his work or not, the American novelist generates attention. His novels burst with characters. His plots and subplots are complex, humorous, often bizarre. Most of his eight novels, including The World According to Garp, are huge bestsellers. Two have been made into films. Irving, his wife Janet Turnbull, and son Everett now live part of the year in Toronto. Tonight's CTV portrait, John Irving, the storyteller's story. This has not been a, um, a terrific week for me. John Irving uh, has pneumonia. I won't uh, bore you with a list of the complications of taking this particular antibiotic. Um, impotency, <laughs> illiteracy. <laughs> And, and worst of all, a, a recurring nightmare involving uh, Lucien Bouchard's wife. <laughs> but he's obviously in fine form. Irving has attracted a theater full of literary fans to hear him read. In the world, according to Garth, we are all terminal cases. I always begin with how the story ends. And I don't know how I get there. I mean, I just see it. I see, I see the end of a story or I see something that feels like the end of a story, and then I work my way back to where such a story might begin. T.S. Garp always suspected he would die young. Garp narrowly escaped growing up on the grounds of an all-girls school, where his mother was offered the position of school nurse. It's never so much ideas that, 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 um, that interest me as, as a kind of connective narrative, as, as how to make a sentence go, and then and then, and then he said, but, and, it's, it's always, it, it's always what, what is the sentence that follows the sentence that keeps the paragraph moving? I know he's being criticized for the length of sentences, the length of his prose. I think a lot of that is because he has such depth. He's the master of plot and punctuation. This man uses a semicolon like no one else I have ever met in my life. He's poignant, and he's wordy, and you, get to, you just keep reading and reading and reading, and it never ends. I love Darwin. An Irving fan waits backstage to catch a glimpse of a literary maestro. I'm sorry, I'm not doing any of that tonight because I've got to get home to my babysitter. She looks like a child with $29.95 on her nose. But a man came along and looked at Taya and he said, This is the nicest doll I've ever seen. I'm going to get that doll for my son. Home is where you find oh, four-year-old yes, son Everett. He jumped up. We and wife Janet, who is Canadian. Home is where you find family mementos, pictures of sons Colin and Brendan. My son Brendan on my uh, left, my son Colin um, on my right. Home is where John Irving writes. There's been so much written about John. What's he really like? <laughs> <laughs> very funny and he's very intense, which I think is a way to describe his books as well. He's just like you'd expect from a man who writes the kind of books he does. They met 10 years ago when Janet was a publisher in Toronto. Now she's his agent. His office is always in the center of the house. He's the only writer I know who doesn't need total seclusion, who doesn't mind interruptions, even in the most critical scenes in a book. The author at work, an article, a column, a book. He's always writing two years for a novel's first draft, three years for revisions. The quality of language is, is what distinguishes literary work from uh, fast-forward uh, journalism or um, uh, popular um, sort of schlock novels. Uh, the fact that it's been gone over and gone over and gone over again. But soon, something will change. At 53, John Irving is face-to-face -face with reality. I want to start writing shorter things. Now that I'm aware, uh, uh, of a memory that's not as good as it used to be. And writing a long novel requires a good memory. That doesn't mean they'll be simpler, he adds. After all, in the world according to John Irving, that wouldn't be his way.